July was tough, and I am really glad that it's behind us. So let's get this wrapped up with our July 2020 budget report. Hi, friends, and welcome to The Budget Bounce. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jen, and we talk about living life on a budget and money on this channel. And if that's something you want to be a part of, then click on that subscribe button down below and make sure that you tap the bell so that you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Now let's just jump right in and start talking about this budget. So I'm going to move over here and look at my screen. So you can see here that we have, um, let's see here, we were under in our income for the month by $488. And that was impacted by a couple of different things. You can see here that we had our regular salaries are blacked out. I always do that for the details, but I have no problem sharing the totals. You can see that we pulled in $753 in sinking funds, which was significantly less than what we planned. We had a little bit that we had to pull in from the emergency fund. Um, we were right on with that refund that I knew was coming. And then we had another good driving rebate that came in that said, that still landed us $10,626, which was $488 under. And yeah, that's not what we planned. And it's because at the, at the very end of the last pay period that Matt got paid for, he missed some hours. And um, I talked about that. In, I've talked about that in a couple of different videos. So if you want to know about what happened with that, um, I have two videos that I will link down below in the description. And that is we're struggling and here's why. And also our August budget setup, because I talked about the fact that we're going to have significantly reduced income in August because Matt is on FMLA. So take a look at those if you want to know more about that story. But that is how we landed here. Uh, moving on to giving, we have $90 is what we ended up spending, which was 40 over budget. And I'm looking down here, guys, and I just want to apologize for how, how washed out I am. I like to do these videos right when I get done with my work day. And at this time of year, the sun is setting in this window right here above me. And even with a dark sheer on it, this is what we're getting. So I apologize. Anyhow, so moving on to housing, we had $1,054 for our mortgage, $135 for utilities, nothing, I'm sorry, gas and electric utilities, nothing for the city utilities, which is water, garbage, sewer, and then, which is a quarterly bill, by the way. And then mobile services is $185, internet was $101. We basically came in right on target. We were over by 43 cents. Then we have transportation where we had 226 for gas, which was under what we planned. 21 for OnStar, which is just right on target. We didn't have any repairs we planned. And then we had 154 for the registration that we had to pay for, for one of the cars. And that brought our total, total to 401, which was $29 under what we budgeted. Before we move on, I wanted to mention that if you like this budget template, I actually am selling it out in my Etsy shop and I have a whole bunch of digital printables to help you with tracking your savings. And I'm developing debt trackers as well for paying down your debt. So you might want to just check out my Etsy shop. I'll leave a link down in the description below so that you can get to that and see all of it out there. And I've been doing videos to go with how to use my budget template because some people are kind of overwhelmed by getting this all set up and that kind of thing. And I totally get it. Uh, this is not a beginner's template. This is, you can be a beginner because I'm making videos to show you how to do that. But if you don't know anything about how to work in a spreadsheet, this is a little overwhelming and I totally get it. And that's why I have a whole playlist for how to use my budget template that I provide to anybody who buys my template. Anyhow, enough about that. Let's move on and talk about food. Next up is food and we spent 730 on groceries. 167 on dining, bringing our total to 898. And that was again, $198 over budget. I did talk about this in our we're struggling and here's why. So again, if you want to know more about our history with this, feel free to watch that video and um, where I talk about that. The next section is the Henry section. And so it was, um, you know, Henry school before is pretty much what we had in here 
And this is related to that, but it was in regard to his graduation celebration. So we had a whole weekend where we celebrated him and um, we were right on target for what we planned on spending. And so that ended up at $498, which was a, uh, you know, a dollar under what we planned. In pets, we didn't have anything for grooming. We had 82 for food, 246 for meds, 54 for the vet, and then 55 for other supplies. So we were at 440, which was 225 over what we planned. Now let's talk about that. First of all, um, I just wasn't, I just have not gotten my arms around what the food is going to cost for, for Bella, our dog, now that we've changed up her diet. But then also on meds, I thought I was going to get to wait until August to buy her flea meds. I thought they were due in August and they were, it was due in July. And so I buy two doses at a time. They're pretty expensive and they last for six months. So I, I, yeah, that's why this was over by $161. So yeah, so we were 225 over in pets. In insurance, we were pretty much right on target where we thought we were going to be. We were at, we planned on 791, we spent 789. The difference was a dollar and some change. In entertainment, we came in under budget at $37. We had $20 for streaming, $3 for HP Inc. Again, no Cinemark because they haven't reactivated our membership yet. And then family entertainment, we spent 13. So that brought us 16 under what we planned. In health, we were just a little bit, we were under by $42. So flexible spending was right what we thought it was going to be. Gym was under what we planned and then 67 for healthcare. So that brought us under by 42. In extras, I thought we were going to do some estate planning. Um, I never did get that appointment made in July. So we ended up not spending anything for that. In Image Cosmetics, um, this was me um, getting my brows done for the first time in like four months. <laughs> and so that was awesome. Uh, legal, this was about child support. Um, we actually talked to an attorney about child support and where Matt's at. So um, that we had to pay for that consultation and that cost $185. Kids, we had a $62 expense. And then uh, Carbonite, this is a, it's a backup membership or a backup subscription and that renewed in July for 83. So that brought our total to 346, which was 753 under what we budgeted. Now that said, we will, I put estate planning in the August budget because we do hope to talk with them um, sometime in August. And I think almost all, yeah, everything here was funded by sinking funds. So that's fantastic. In crap, I forgot about that. We didn't have anything, thank goodness. So we're good there. In envelopes, these are our electronic envelopes that we do. And so um, I spent $27, which was under. Uh, Matt took all of his 80. Household was 241 and miscellaneous was 130. And that brought us to 479, which was 159 over budget. So yeah, this is all... Um, I've mentioned that we're emotional spenders and eaters, and this is related to that, just like the, the food budget is. Yeah, 159 over for envelopes. In the budget bounce, I only had $1.99 that I planned on, and that's exactly what we paid. That's for my Google storage, for my, for my drive. I'm paying $1.99, and I think in the next, before the end of the year, I'm gonna have to up that <laughs> and uh, buy a bigger, but get more storage. Okay, so. next up you can see our savings section here and you can see what we planned on doing, which was 1330, 1330, and we ended up doing a total of 1065. That breakdown is we sent 475 to the emergency fund. We had 115 that we sent to the kids accounts. We went ahead and started a $10 auto transfer to M1 Finance for um, investing. And then, and that's $10 per month that we're going to do going forward. And then Matt's in my retirement. That's what uh, the 1065 was comprised of. In here, I've never really talked about this interest column. So you can see in you know, our previous balance before the uh, month began was $7,047. And then here we have, we made interest on our accounts of $4.24. And then I referenced this. This isn't truly interest. This is actually reflecting the match out of my 401k plan. So this is 25% of whatever I put in over here. 
And then in the spent, we spent $62 out of Xanthi's account. And so that brings our totals. You can see we have emergency fund is at over $4,100, which is fantastic, especially given what's going on with us right now, because we are going to need this, I believe. Uh, then we have um, Henry's at 326. Uh, Nikaila is our granddaughter and she's at 45, 378 for Xanthi. And then we've got 110 in the uh, M1 finance. And then the, these numbers here, this is to show how much we have put into our retirement accounts throughout the year. This is, I restarted this in January for 2020. So this is not our total balance. Um, we, we have a lot more than that in there. Not nearly enough, not nearly enough, but we have way more than this. So our, our new balance for all of these is $8,127. Okay, so next up is our sinking funds. And if you are newer to the channel and have not seen me talk about this before, I am a big proponent and lover of sinking funds. And that is because we are both spenders and we need to have money available to us in the future for things that are coming down the pipeline. And we are not good about hanging on to that. If we have it in our active account, we will spend it. So instead, I move it out into sinking funds where it is there and ready for us when the time comes. Just going to run down through here. You can see what we planned. So let's compare that to what we actually did. So we put 230 into auto insurance, 39 to auto registrations, 100 to business travel, 80 to city utilities, 40 to clothing, 25 to estate planning, which you can see is a lot less than what we planned. Nothing to gifts, 100 to Henry School, 70 to holidays, 50 to image cosmetics, 81 to life insurance, 25 to uh, medical or healthcare account. Uh, one check ahead is 50. Online subscriptions was 80. Pet expense, we didn't put anything in since we spent it all. Same thing with gifts, that's why these are zero. Technology, we put 25 in. Uh, the budget balance, we put in 160, vacation 100, vehicles 150, and then our wedding anniversary 15. And so that comes to $1,420, which you can see is less than what we originally planned. Now we have our, our previous balances that we came into the month, the start of July with $6,789. You can see here we earned a little bit of interest, so it comes to a total of $4,062. Woo. I wish 4062 holy cow, $4.62 is what we made. And uh, let's see here, what did we spend? So we pulled 154 out of our auto registrations to cover that auto registration in the transportation section. We pulled 500 out for Henry's graduation, 15 out for my brows, and then 83 out for the um, uh, the carbonite, which is that, that backup uh, plan that we have. So we pulled a total of $753, and that brings our total to $7,468 at the end of July. All right, here we are. We are in our debt section, and this sucker is so big that I have it broken into three subsections. So I'm going to break all that down for you. But before we get going, this is going to be really important if you've been around and you've been watching our story. I did a um, an update to our debt confession. I did that video in 2018, about a month after we started everything, um, living life on a budget. And I did an update, a 2020 update to that in July and posted it. And that exercise lead, led me to go through, I'm like really, really scour through everything that we had done. And I realized that there were things that I had not been keeping track of properly. And so our numbers have changed. So I'm going to reference those as we go through here. And it starts with the paid off section. So first of all, um, we started with, I think it was 37 or 38 debts in in 2018 that I was aware of. And then there were a handful that came and we are now at a total of 42 debts that we are paying off. And you can see here in the paid off section that we have, this is 12 and then this is 10. So we've paid off 22. And so big win right here that I got this updated. There were things that were missing from this section. We have actually paid off more debts than not. So the number of debts remaining is less than the number of debts that we've paid off. Now, if you look at the dollar value, significantly different, but still to have our list reduced from 42 down to 20, 
that is a big, big psychological win for me. So I'm excited about that. You can see that our total paid off is $33,383. 100% done. We don't have to think about these anymore. The next section, oh, before I go to the next section, let's talk about the pink and black font. So the reason why you see this is because, actually because of the next section, Matt really wanted to focus on debts that had my name on them. And because we had so many, I was having trouble keeping track of those easily. So I put mine in pink and I made Matt's black. So anything that has my name on it, even if it has Matt's name too, anything that has my name on it is pink. Anything that is Matt only, we put in black font. So that's what that means. And if we look at the charged off section, these are old credit cards of Matt's. And he, he said, he said to me, it was really important to him at the time um, that we focus on things that we were current on and not be spending our energy and our, our financial resources on things that are old and have already hit his credit report and already done all these awful things that we were worried about happening with my own credit report and that kind of thing. Um, he said, we can deal with those later. Can we just put them to the side? So that's what we did. There's a total of $9,547 here. All of these are long sold off from the original creditor. They're one and two and three companies in of having this debt sold. So that's what those are. And we will deal with those later. We have a plan for that. We will probably settle all of these, but we'll figure all that out when we get closer to that. The next section is our actively paying section. So these are the debts that we are currently paying on. You can see a lot of them are mine. And then there are a few that are Matt's. And so Matt's got these two big ones, the child support or rearage that he owes and then student loans. So let me just run down through here. You can see we have a total of $176,056 that we are actively paying on right now. This does not include our mortgage. This is straight up non-mortgage debt. So let's start. We have an ambulance bill that we paid 20 this month, 52 care credit, which is a credit card, um, 25 to another credit card, $50 to the uh, to Matt's private student loan that I co-signed on. That's why it's pink. $190 to my Lowe's card, $200 to our HELOC, $550 to our car payment. And then we have a total of $725 paid here on Matt's three child support orders. So we've now broken those out and because we can see the balances on each one now. So now that we have access to that information, that has opened, opened up a whole other can of worms, which is why we spoke to an attorney and spent $185 in July. So anyhow, then we have this family loan um, that we pay my parents $200 a month. Student loans, uh, we are not paying anything on. And so that brings the total debt to $2,010 that we paid in July, which is a little bit less. This thing, this pesky thing, the minimum payment changes. I don't, and I don't know why, uh, but it's set to pay the minimum payment, whatever that is. So it varies and from month to month. So now let's come down here and well, let's go across here. So we started with $187,441 at the beginning of July. We did have to pay some interest here, a total of $252. When it was all said and done with our ending balances here, we owe $185,603 as of the end of July. So what does that look like? So we started over here. We have our total expenses versus our total income. And you can see we had um, less income that we planned. We talked about that at the very beginning, but we also had less expenses than we planned. And those actually um, ended up uh, with $195 remaining. And because of what's going on with the uncertainty with Matt's um, leave and the fact that healthcare expenses are up right now for us and that kind of thing, I just decided to uh, keep that there instead of moving it into a savings account because we are actively spending on those things right now. The other thing that I wanted to speak to is this number right here. So for a couple years now, I've been talking about $252,000 of debt that we had. And that is where we started, but we have had to add some debt over time. And so actually this number, and this was all came from that exercise of having to do an updated debt confession where I was showing what our progress was versus what we've paid off. 
And, you know, our starting balance, really, if you look at it as we add it over time, the total we're going to be paying, the total principal we're paying is $263,358. So that's significantly more. It's about 11000 more than what we started with. And this will be the number that we carry forward um, from this day on. When you look at what we paid this month, this is this number minus this number. That's how we get that. So this shows that we paid 20.8% of our regular salaries towards debt. So this number is tied to this number divided by our regular salaries. So it does not include any of the sinking funds that we pulled in or any any other income like when, when our insurance gave us the good driving discount. It doesn't include any of that kind of stuff. So 20.8% of our regular salaries we um, paid towards debt in the month of July. And then our total paid to date. So because this number jumped, then this number jumped because this number hasn't changed. So this number hasn't changed. This went up. So the difference between these two is significant. And now I went from being in the 60s to we've paid off over $75,000. We're at almost $78,000. So wow. I had no idea. So we had been making more progress than I knew. So we are at 29.5% of our debt. Our total debt has been paid off. So this is fantastic. There's a lot going on in my life, in our life, that is stressful and scary and all of that good stuff. But there are some really good things that have come out of my scrutiny of our numbers and really getting our arms around that. And I'm so glad I decided to do a debt confession update because I had not, I had not slowed down month to month. These over the course of the last two and a half years, these little things have added up to $11,000 that I wasn't accounting for in our total debt that we're going to pay off. This is exciting. And no matter what is going on in, in our life right now, in this moment, right now here with you guys, I'm stoked. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yes, I'm a child of the 80s. Anyway, so that is how July turned out. So while it was icky to begin with, well, it ended icky. Um, it's It was not pleasant. It was upsetting. There were a lot of things going on this right here is why we've worked so hard. We just keep plugging away and that plugging away for two and a half years. I cannot, I can't stress enough to you guys. If you think it's, it's just too much, it's, there's no way you could possibly overcome all of your debt. There's no way that you'll ever get ahead. You're never going to get ahead if you don't start. That's the first thing. Nine years we went doing this before, before we couldn't do it anymore. We were facing financial ruin. And if you are thinking that this can't be done and wow, she's already got two and a half years on me, you know, gosh, you know, like that's going to take forever. Two and a half years seems like forever. But when you're working month after month and doing, making changes that are, are putting you on the path to meet your financial goals, th that's how this happens. That is exactly how this happens. $77,000 did not happen by accident. And it was, we are not, we could, we could have paid off a lot more than this by now. So we are not perfect by any means. But even at that, we've still paid off almost $78,000. You can do it too, no matter where you are in your stage of life, no matter how much money you make, no matter how much debt you have. If you are willing to do the work, guys, you can do this too. I hope that our story helps others find hope in the shadow of the fear and the uncertainty that comes with, with a mountain of debt that is weighing on you or pulling you down know that it can be done. Whether you follow and do it the way we do it, or you do it the way somebody else does it, or you just do it your own way. Come up with a plan to meet your financial goals, work at them, and you will meet them. You will. As long as you make better decisions more often, good decisions more often than you make bad ones with your money. 
So next up, I'm gonna leave a link to my budget overview video where I'm talking about how my budget template works. If you are somebody who's interested in starting budgeting or starting working in a Google Sheets type, you know, a spreadsheet like this, then you're gonna to wanna to check this out. There's a lot that happens that you guys don't see. It's behind the scenes kind of stuff like this over here. I explain how all of that works and the one that I sell has even more functionality in it than this one. I'll leave a link to my shop below like I mentioned before. I will meet you guys over there to talk about how this budget template will function for you if you decide that this is for you.